Today we're back at the workbench and I'm going to be talking about Alcom Scale Models Chain Link Fence HO Scale. This is the card that the parts of the fence come off. It's stainless steel, I believe they're laser cut out of the stainless steel. The parts are not there, but this is what the parts look like. So there's a, a whole series of runs of chain link fence. There is a sliding gate or cantilever gate. There's a vehicle gate and a personal gate. So you have a lot of options of how you put this thing together. And the tops have barbed wire already built into them. And when you get it set up, you just bend that barbed wire over. These are the parts in process on the layout. So around my ADM facility, I'm gonna fence it in. So you see the personal gate here, and then this is a vehicle gate. So I'll, I'll put a bit of a dirt road there. So that allows access to any vehicles that need to come in to service the piping and whatnot. Then there'll be regular chain link fence, and then it bends the corner. And the vehicle gates, what, what they call vehicle gates, you cut these with a pair of scissors, a sharp pair of scissors that you don't want to use for anything else. That's the best way I found to, to cut the stainless steel. So you would cut this gate down the middle and then it comes with metal rod that I'll show you, um, that you use then to as posts, but you also can use them to create hinges for each of the gates, each side of this gate. So it's a vehicle gate, but it actually is wide enough to to accommodate rail cars. And then down the other side, I have just the straight fence sections. And then over here, since this is a couple of different sets, I'm using two of the personal gates, one there so that people can get through. And then I continue on with another piece of fencing. So it's pretty simple to work with. That's what I like about it. In a previous video, I showed you how I use an alloy forms, alloy forms fence, which took a lot of manual craftsmanship. Uh, this one really, you take a section of the fence and cut it to size. A, a full run looks like this. You can cut that at any, at any point with those, with the scissors. It's thin stainless steel, but it's pretty, it's pretty sturdy. It's almost like spring steel. And it comes with I think it's bronze phosphor metal rods. You can use brass rod if you have it, uh, or even steel rod. It's a pretty narrow gauge, but every, say, third or fourth post, you just CA glue that rod onto it with a base long enough to stick into your baseboard. And in my case, it's home soak. So once you get all the, all the pieces laid out, you just decide where you want to CA glue the posts. And and then you just make the holes and you stick the whole piece in there. Um, I don't, I, I fit the whole thing and then I take it apart and then I spray paint it with like a gray primer, just a rattle can gray primer because it gives it a more realistic weathered look. And then you can put some rust wash on it. So the most complicated part I would say is, is making the gates because you have to put a piece of brass tubing into the baseboard and then line that up in such a way that the posts on either end of the gate, my crossing signal goes off whenever I'm over here, but um, you have to line up the posts on, on the end of the gate with that piece of brass tube that you've embedded into the baseboard. But it once you get it on there, it works great. So I've got a project going on with that. I've also got fencing going on here with the distribution and cold storage. What I'm trying to do with the gate here, I'm using the the cantilevered rolling gate, and I'm just going to cut that in the middle, and then that will open up. Um, or I may just have the whole thing swing out this way. Haven't decided yet, but that's the cool thing about these kits: you can customize them however you want. You can put different pieces together and use them for purposes other than what they're labeled for. So that section there is actually meant to look like a a rolling or a sliding gate, but you can easily cut cut it into two panels, three panels, four panels, and make it a swing gate.
this is what the rod looks like that I refer to, the phosphor bronze rod. It's good because it's flexible, but it doesn't bend easily. So if you're using that to support the fence and somebody bumps it, it'll spring back to, to its shape. And I use that again, like every say third or fourth section of fence. And that's all you really need. You don't need to put one at, at each post of the fence. This fence is pretty light and pretty durable, but stainless steel. I sand it a little bit, rough it up, and then I rough up the back of the fence so that the CA glue adheres. I use like a semi-liquidy CA and just hold it in there till it, till it hardens. Uh, this also works as the, the hinge for the gates. So if you glue this, a piece of this to each side of the gate doors, then you slide down into a brass tube and then the gates will hinge off that. So I think he gives you, uh, the guy there, his name is Bernard and a uh, great guy, easy to work with, not a sponsor. Um, I just like the product, but he gives you, I think two or three of these with each kit. So it gives you plenty to set up the whole fence. I actually bought some extra. You can buy this stuff. Um, I can't remember what hobby shop I bought this from, but it's Phosphor Brown's 0.032, comes in 12 pieces. Titchy train group, but that's what Alcom will send you when you buy one of their fence kits. So I have about, gosh, I don't know, maybe four or five of these kits that I've, it, it's, if, if you have a lot to do, it, it helps getting a couple of extra kits because that way you can have two vehicle gates around one building, for example, because each set only comes with one set of vehicle gates. So after a while, I ended up with just a bunch of the parts that I took off the cards and I'm just kind of pulling them as I need them for each facility. So let's take a look at a finished Alcom fence enclosure. And this is the engine facility that I've been working on in prior video posts. So it's nearly complete. I've got to do some details in the building, but you can see that fence has a very realistic look. And there's a few angles here, so it got a bit tricky, but um, I utilized the personal gate there. So there's an entryway off the street then it makes a bend around where I have the dumpster. As I'm showing it to you, you can see I've painted it with a gray primer. I've also done a rust wash, so I've touched the barbed wire. And you can see how the barbed wire is now bent forward, like you typically see it. So you can leave it up straight or you bend it over. And it bends fairly easy. And then I, I hit it with a rust wash. And I hit the poles, the top and the bottom of the chain link, just to give it a, a bit of a weathered look. You can go as crazy as you want in terms of rusting it, but I didn't want this to look ancient, but used. So we have a long run of fence here and we round the corner and I put another gate here, personal gate. And that's just so that people can access from the train crew if they need to get into the electrical box or whatever. And then the cool part about these things is, is making the gates. So and like I said, you can make the gates any size you want. You can use the, the two-door vehicle gate. In this case, because I had to open up something wide enough for a switch, I took that cantilevered sliding gate and I just cut it into two panels of two. And I hinged, hinged each of those. So in order to get into the engine facility when you're doing your operations, you have to open those gates. And then you close the gates once things are in there. I, what, I'll, what I will do is I put stops on the inside and the outside, and that's similar to what I did here using this Ally Forms fence. So I've got stops. I have to move that derailleur still, but there's stops on the inside as well, so they, they close fully. Right now, they without the stops, they kind of swing free, so they can, uh, they can go in and out, but we'll fix that. And then signage, really. That's the icing on the cake. When you put the the warning signs and the private property and flammable signs near the fuel tank. Anyway, so then the fence runs along the backside and I added, used one of the cantilever gates to give the appearance that that's where vehicles could enter into the engine facility. And I made a, uh, the pallets are just there, not painted yet. But I made a ramp of 
gravel so that it gives a place for vehicles or tools to come in and out of that sliding gate. That sliding gate doesn't actually operate, but it doesn't need to because it's, it's set back there. The only thing that really needs to operate are those gates at the end of the track. So that gives you an idea of what you can do with this Alcom fence. I love it. It's, I mean, the alloy forms was nice. It was fun, but quite a bit more manual labor, honestly, for a look that I think, uh, I don't know, I'd say they're about comparable. Um, you can see, I talked about using the phosphor bronze poles. So you, the fence is CIA glued to those. I do, there's one there and then there's one there. Then I skip a couple and there's one there. So it all depends on where you need support. On this back piece, there's not going to be a lot of interference. People aren't going to be bumping it. Up in the front here, I probably spaced them out closer so that there's, it's a little bit more sturdy. And the vehicle gate here is another access point. So I use gravel and weathered that. So it looks like that would be a place people can come in off this dirt road, which is kind of a maintenance of way road and enter in with parts or whatever they need to do. So let's give another pan around. So the, it goes up to the building on this side and then it goes to the crossing gate. And then it connects to the building with that sliding gate on this side. And then hopefully you can get a good shot of what the other side looks like. I didn't do the rust wash on that side because you really can't see it from outside of the layout. Um, there's the whole thing. I'll give you a drone view of the engine facility. So that's it. Easy to work with. Um, very customizable, regardless of what shape you're trying to surround, what type of property you're, you're trying to surround. There's, there's a ton of different options. You can use different types of gates. You can make your own gates. You can even take a, a piece of the regular fence and, and uh, just cut two panels of that and make gates out of that. So sky's the limit. I've got I like it so much that that's done with the alloy forms fence. You can see that I've, I'm starting to rough in Alcom fencing around the food facility. It's a rough neighborhood. Everything's got to be fenced in barbed wire. This one's done. And then I'm going to, as I showed you, I'll do the ADM facility and then also the cold storage facility. So it's a good look, when you, especially if you're doing contemporary industrial switching layouts, you typically do see the rail properties and the sidings fenced in for obvious reasons. So big fan of it. Um, you find information on their website. And I hope you found that useful and I hope you like the way it looks as much as I do. Thanks for watching. Cheers.